Case 2. The Inception It was about a year after the accident. It was attributed to human error. Norman and his mom had finally started to uh, adjust. The insurance money did just enough to give her an inexpensive chair and, uh, well, the basics, the occasional nurse, uh, but nothing else. So nine-year-old Norman filled in the rest, brushing her teeth, feeding her, and, uh, well, addressing the needed itch here and there. Norman was with her day and night. He set up his mega Lego projects in her bedroom so that he could be with his second most loved thing in life and, well, just build. This was the Mr. Rogers neighborhood life he wanted, not necessarily what he actually had. So he doted, she appreciated, and thus the seeds were sown for the founder of what would become the greatest robot machinery company on the planet only uh, a dozen or so years later. So yeah, here's the stock chart. He felt the force. He trusted his feelings. While Norman didn't really miss not being able to spend time away from home with friends, the homeschooling kits worked just fine. Yeah, check that out. Well, he went at his own pace and it was a fast pace. His superpower came from noticing patterns, movements that repeated again and again and again. Well, first, there was the auto brusher. It worked, and then it didn't. He had one thing that most nine-year-old inventors don't, time. While more motions came, the Lego feeder, uh, then the auto hair brusher, the nose wiper, the drink bringing scooter thing, then the random itch scratcher, uh, yeah, that's what that thing is. And each of these advances brought him one step of freedom closer to being able to leave his mom for short periods of time. It wasn't that he wanted to be away from her, he just wanted more motions to sketch. He had done virtually all of the things that moved in his home already. The quality time alone, masses of quality time, let him invent extremely inexpensive solutions that solved an ever-increasing range of motions that would eventually let his mom, uh, well, more or less have her life back. Like this, there came the bed easer, uh, and this, the newspaper fetcher, and uh, this, uh, this little device, yeah, the little chef Ramsey, ding, ding, ding. Well, eventually Norman ran out of the pre-designed blueprints of Lego and started to build amazing things that went off of the highly structured Lego blueprint restrictions of, well, you know, just rectangles, squares, and uh, these little knobby things. Okay, so as it relates to our case, the key here was Norman's observation that Lego had standardized common parts. These things, they all fit together, and in any big Lego kit, there were only maybe a dozen or so meaningfully different shaped parts, which went from this to this. Yeah. Norman realized at a very young age that when he had to make a custom fitted Lego part to complete a Lego crane arm part, or a shoulder socket, or a cup holder, it took like three hours and cost something like $18 in plastic resin and kiln time to build something like a uh, this weird looking custom part thing. But when the plastic stamping was standard Lego piece, like this, it cost less than a penny, and even less when he bought it in bulk. So mom saw this pattern too, and she had gotten him this book. The key learning? Well, what sort of made Henry Ford and the Ford Corporation was the same thing. Before Henry invented this, the assembly line and the cars and all the stuff that came from it, well, cars had been made with something like 40,000 custom-made parts, and they took like a year to build. And back then, a car cost, in today's dollars, something like $300,000, uh, and it worked often. Yeah. But with standardized reliable parts and rote repeated factory production movements, Henry made his Model Ts for something like a tenth of that price. And they actually did not break down every mile. 
Eventually, Norman was able to give his mother back almost all of her old mobility, you know, before the accident. He quickly mastered the art of inventing more advanced parts, and there were uh, all the robot thingies, mechanical props, engines, servo motors, linear sliders, flip-flops, switches, latches, actuators, sensors, digital multimeters, ammeters, a surface mount and through hole, light sensors, infrared metering devices, gyroscopes, accelerometers, and a bunch of other stuff. They were the robot parts whose utility he would master at an extremely young age. Well, toward the end of his high school years, he had built enough mobility for his mother that he could leave the house for a day or two or three at a time and thus he began to develop a semblance of a social life. While he competed in robot building competitions, FLL, FTC, FRC, VEX, BotBall, GSER, BattleBots, and well, he won all of them. Eventually, Norman captained his Silicon Valley robotics team, and robotics are actually a very serious sport in Palo Alto, California, and his team actually won the GSER World Championships. Yeah, it beat the Chinese in the finals. Well, robots had consumed Norman, but they also sort of saved his life. They were his companions in horribly lonely times as he grew up. These were his emotional roots. They would drive him the rest of his life. It's a common trait among big, bold company founders that they have an emotional need to resolve and, well, that has created a kind of emotional vacuum for them, one which the deep engagement endemic to building their own company fills. The emotional drivers of Norman's life likely never made it to the S-1 registration statement that his eventual company, named Common Parts Robotics, or CPR, <laughs> submitted to the SEC for its eventual IPO. Yeah, this thing. But it's an important point for us to think about. Emotional drivers matter. Norman's drive came from trying to undo his mother's human-caused accident that left her a quadriplegic. The build of robots were his language of love back to her, and in fairness, he trusted robots more than he did human operators of machinery. Big point there. Anyway, the build was all his language of love for her in Lego and in standardized parts. <laughs>